It was hundreds of years ago when our founding fathers realized that the Mississippi River was a major transportation hub for North America. Beginning in 1673, France claimed Illinois' country, an area that extended from Lake Michigan and Superior to the Ohio and the Missouri Rivers. French leaders hoped that the Illinois' country would be a source of furs and precious metals. In 1718, the Illinois' country was removed from Canadian jurisdiction and made part of Louisiana. Government of a vast territory was turned over to the Company of the Indies. As enterprise chartered by King Louis XV, the company was granted a trade monopoly, given a jurisdiction over all forts, posts, and garrisons, and empowered to appoint all officials. In December 1718, the government at New Orleans sent a contingent of army officers, government officials, and company employees, mining engineers, workmen, and soldiers to establish a government in the Illinois country. French leaders hoped that the military presence would pacify the Fox Indians, whose attacks put great pressure on the French villages. Construction soon began on a wooden fort on the Mississippi River, 18 miles north of Kaskaskia. French officials named their stockade Fort Deschart, in honor of Louis de Deschart, son of the Regent of France. The fort was completed in 1720, located about a musket shot from the Mississippi River. The fort consisted of a palisade of square logs surrounded by a dry moat. Bastions built at diagonally opposite corners provided cover fire for each of the walls. Several buildings occupied the fort's interior, including a storehouse and counting house used by the Indies Company. Other buildings probably served the provincial council, which conducted the affairs of the kings and the company. The fort, subject to frequent flooding, deteriorated rapidly. Work on a new fort began in 1725. Built inland from the Mississippi, the new log stockade was about 160 feet square and had bastions at each corner. Four buildings were located inside the fort. The bastions contained other structures, among them a powder magazine, a prison, and a stable. Outside the fort stood a small chapel and a few private residences. French leaders had discussed building a stone fort to protect their interests on the Mississippi River since the 1730s. Though the region failed to yield precious metals, holding the Illinois country was deemed essential for trade and defense. There was profitable deposits of lead that had been discovered on the west banks of the Mississippi. More importantly, rich bottom lands produced bountiful crops and made the region Louisiana's breadbasket. Construction of the new fort was delayed, however, while the government debated its location. Officials in New Orleans desired a site near Kaskaskia. Found in 1703, the area's most prominent community. The local commandant disagreed, arguing on a location on the Mississippi near the earlier wooden fort. Extended correspondence resulted in the final decision to build a new stone structure a short distance from its predecessor. Limestone was quarried from the bluffs north of Prairie de Rocher and conveyed across a small lake by raft before it was hauled to the site by oxen. Although Governor Kerlerick reported to his superiors in 1754 that the construction was substantially completed, major work continued for several years. In 1760, Louisiana's chief fiscal officer reported that the fort would be completed by year's end. The Stone Fort de Chart served as France's Illinois country headquarters for only 10 years. France surrendered Illinois to Great Britain in the 1763 Treaty of Paris. British troops of the 42nd Royal Highland Regiment took possession of Fort Deschartes on October 10, 1765. The British made little use of their new possession, which they renamed Fort Cavendish. Military engineers attempted to control the erosion caused by the Mississippi which already threatened to swallow the South Wall. 
but British military leaders in North America soon deemed that the fort be of little practical value and ordered it abandoned in 1771, ending its use as a military post. The futility of controlling the river's erosion of the fort was underscored in 1772, when the south wall of bastions collapsed into the Mississippi. In the 1820s, visitors noted trees growing in the walls and buildings, which began to literally disappear as local residents scavenged stone and timber to serve as materials for other structures. By 1900, none of the walls existed above ground level, and all the buildings vanished completely, except for a powder magazine. In 1913, the Illinois legislature authorized the purchase of the Stone Fort site. The crumbling powder magazine, the only surviving military structure, was restored about 1917. Workers in the 1920s exposed portions of the building and wall foundations. And progress continued in the 1930s by the Workers' Progress Administration, which reconstructed the gateway and two stone buildings. Fort Deschartes is the last of three 18th century forts by that name, erected by the Mississippi River by France's colonial government. From 1720 to 1763, French administration of the Illinois country was centered at the forts, built successfully over a 40-year period on or near the same site. The stone fort, built in the 1750s and abandoned in 1771, has been partially reconstructed to provide a glimpse into the life of Illinois under the French regime. Fort Deschartes, the historical site is managed by the Illinois Historical Preservation. Today, Visitors to the site see a partially rebuilt 18th century fort. The north wall, complete with bastions and guardhouse, contains musket ports and embrasures for cannons. In the east bastion stands a rebuilt powder magazine considered by many to be the oldest building in Illinois. Other structures on the fort's interior include guardhouses and the King's Storehouse. The storehouse is home to the Pathman Museum which uses items discovered during the archaeological research near the fort and other artifacts to interpret life in Illinois during the colonial period. These barracks in the government house has been outlined by wood frames, a technique called ghosting, to provide a sense of their original size and form. <laughs>